Hi everyone and welcome back to another podcast episode. I cannot believe we're on our my fifth podcast. So today I have a ton to show you from finished objects, works in progress, and acquisitions over the Christmas period. So let's get into it. Hi everyone, as you may notice, I currently have a little helper. We'll see how long he stays a helper before <laughs> becoming destructive. Um, but you gotta show off, but this is Kepler if you've not seen him before. Um, he's obsessed with yarn, so he's excited to be joining us today. And as I mentioned, I am filming another podcast episode. Um, this will be my fifth podcast. I do a monthly podcast, not um, a weekly or bi-weekly as a lot of others do. So that means I've been doing this for five months, which is crazy. Um, so, you know, I'm going to follow the traditional format, do my finished objects, talk about some whips and get into some acquisitions. So I'm going to start off with my finished objects. I've got my little pile in front of me and as I mentioned, filming this day after Christmas. So a lot of what I worked on for the past month, I gifted. Um, so I don't have everything with me, but I do have photos of everything. So the first thing I finished was Frog and Toad. Here's a little picture of it. And this was definitely a labor of love. Um, I have never worked on little figurines or animals before, and it was really difficult. Um, it was using two fingering weights or a DK held double on US1 double pointed needles. And I'd messed up a couple times. I had to re-knit one of the legs and it was hard. In my last podcast, I'd had just Toad finished. I hadn't stuffed her or anything, but I had Toad's body finished. And I think you could kind of tell I was a little bit defeated of like, oh gosh, I have to make another one and all their clothes. So I'd taken a break from making Toad to make from making frog to make their outfits and then I was able to finish up frog and they turned out great so here's my little picture they definitely are a little bit wonky but that's okay <laughs> I was knitting off gauge I guess I've got to be honest I did not check my gauge because I wasn't gonna go lower than a US1 um and it the, the size doesn't really matter um so yeah, they were a little bit off gauge, but I was able to gift them. And my friend, Leah, she's one of my greatest friends and so, so knit worthy. And she opened Frog and Toad and just started sobbing immediately. It was amazing. It's the best gift I've ever given. She kept saying, you gifted me an heirloom. So it definitely made it all worth it to have done all the all the little all the little stitches i broke three us1 double pointed needles so it was it was a labor of love for sure um but it really paid off and i'm really glad to have been able to give that to her so yeah that's my first finished object um don't have it with me for very good reason it is now living in her home where it will be for the rest of the rest of time hopefully um all right the next thing i do have so this was another whip in or I think it one was finished in my last podcast um and these are the tiny gilded jumpers it is a pattern by fable knitwear it's a free pattern um and they were really fun to knit so these were dk weight held or yeah dk weight I used fingering held double on um us3 dpns and so it's pretty traditional raglan shaping for the sweater. I messed up a little bit. There were supposed to be decreases in the sleeves, which I think would make the sleeves come down a little bit more, but I accidentally omitted them on the first one and then I was like, whatever, I'm not gonna do them on the second. Um, and then, so the nice thing about this jumper compared to other ones, which you could add to any of the tiny jumper patterns, but this one's made for it, is to embroider something on top. So this is a J um, and this is a P. These will be for my aunt and uncle Jennifer and Peter. And so yeah, I'm leaving town. As I mentioned, this is the 26th, but this video won't go up until the weekend of the 30th. Um, so I'm leaving town in two days, the 28th to fly to them. Um, so we'll do Christmas then, hence why I still have these. 
and yeah we'll do it then so hopefully they like them i'm just gonna use them as little gift toppers for the other gifts i gave them and then hopefully years to come they'll be on their christmas tree as well so yeah they were really fun to knit um oh the yarn this is arches by emma's yarn and it's in their hella hank so it was a I should have it in front of me, but I, I basically just used leftovers from other projects for both of these. So this one I believe was a superwash merino, nylon, and cashmere blend. So it was like 85 merino, 15 nylon, 10 cashmere maybe. That doesn't, yeah, I think that, nope, that would add up to 110. I don't know, but it was a blend of cashmere, nylon, and merino, and the colorway is Arches by Emma's Yarn. And then this is, this was leftovers from a pair of socks I made for my boyfriend over the summer, and it is called The Great Pacific Northwest um, by Jada Wu or Jada Wu Designs. And it's just normal, um, I think it's a 80-20 sock base. So yeah, very cute little patterns, and I'm excited to give these both. And they were a really nice kind of palette refresher between other projects. So definitely appreciated them. Okay, the next thing I again do not have, um, but here's a little picture. And these are the Blooming Lavender Socks by Stone Knits. I used some leftover yarn I had in stash. And then I'd also bought two balls of Knit Pick Stroll. And I'm not recalling the color colorway names off the top of my head, but my Ravelry is linked below with all of the project information. Um, for every project I do, I make sure to log the yarns used. Um, but yes, it was Knit Pick Stroll, which is just Knit Picks's um, standard sock base. And, you know, it's in a kind of deep purple and a pretty strong green color. Um, and then, you know, the back is a colorway called Maidstone by The Wandering Flock, and it was on their alpaca sock base. Or I think it's called Baby Paca, but it's um, made with superwash merino, alpaca yarn, or alpaca fibers, and nylon. Um, so it was a really, really, it was quite a joy to knit. I really love colorwork socks. I knit them up really quickly, um, and I gifted these to my grandma, who has been knitting for years and years and years. I have tons of objects from her from, you know, childhood up till now, and, you know, the past few years, she definitely hasn't been able to knit as much as she's gotten older, and she has some arthritis, and... So I was really excited to gift her some socks this year so she could have another pair of hand knit socks because um, I don't think she can make them anymore and to kind of be able to show off to my grandma just to say like, look, look how good I've gotten. So um, I was so excited to gift those. I kind of messed up <laughs> and um, she lives in California and I wasn't sure if she was coming out for Christmas or if my dad was going to California for Christmas. So I kind of waited um, until pretty late um, to figure out if I needed to send them to her or not and then it turned out turned out I did and so the Monday before Christmas the 18th I had to go to the post office and send them and there was a super long line and I was using a self-service kiosk and I somehow selected an option that I was just trying to do like the flat rate shipping thing but I somehow selected something that made it priority mail and it cost me $30 to ship her socks and <laughs> I, I I just paid it. I It took me like five minutes to get to the screen where it told me the price and there was a super long line behind me. And then at least it got to her before Christmas. So, um, you know, I was kind of upset about paying 30 bucks to ship these socks, but it was worth it in the end to get them to her. And I talked to her yesterday and she was so sweet. She said she loved them, they were beautiful. And she was so excited to show uh, one of her other knitting friends that, and that her friend was gonna be green with envy, so. Um, very rewarding to gift that as well and I know it'll be well appreciated and they were really fun to knit. I might make a pair for myself or a friend in the future because it was just a really nice fun color work pattern. And I did omit one of the leaves. There's supposed to be four sets of leaves. I omitted the last one. I just typically prefer my socks legs to be a little shorter than um, designers recommend. Um, I think yeah I just I don't like my socks that long so um, I admitted that one and I still think it looks really nice and I think a lot of people did that as well. Okay. Um, the next thing <laughs> I also don't have, 
um, but it is the Rhett Hat by Megan Bobbin um, or Babine, I'm not sure how to say it, um, but it is also, she's associated with Hudson and West, which is a yarn brand. And so this was a really fun project. This was for my dad. And so I used this really nice green yarn for him and it's a nice cabled hat. Uh, he, I gifted it yesterday and he really enjoyed it, put it on immediately. I'd also featured in my last podcast, um, I made the tied knot or tied leaves hat by uh, Justina. I'm blanking on her last name, but um, that's all on my Ravelry and I talked about it in my last episode, but I made that hat for my dad's girlfriend. So they both got to open their cabled hats and wear them. Um, so that was really nice. And my dad and I went for a walk later in the day to walk um, my dad and his girlfriend's dog. And um, he was wearing his hat and said it kept him really warm. So I was very happy to have gifted that as well. <laughs> um, next thing I do have, we're onto objects that I do have. So that, the red hat was my final gift knit. And then I had freedom to knit whatever I want for two weeks. Or no, I finished that on like, yeah, I think I had like a whole week until Christmas if not more. No, I had like a week and a half of just me knitting, which was so fun and so nice after months and months of, I've done a fair amount of sample knits. Well, I did, I did one sample knit, but it was a whole sweater. And then all these gift knits, I haven't really been able to knit for myself in a while. So it was really fun to have a few weeks before Christmas, uh, which I was not expecting to have. So the first thing I made <laughs> is this, um, it is the kitty balaclava or cat hat pattern. Um, I am forgetting the designer's name. I'm sorry. It is going to be down below. Um, but it is so cute. I messed up on the picking up stitches. So I was supposed to, part of how this is constructed is you sew part of the ear together, but I thought you were supposed to sew the entire ear together. So the ear is too small. And then I ended up picking stitches up um, here instead of where it's supposed to along the ear. And so there's a lot of bulk in the face and the ears are a little bit small. Um, so the actual pattern is a lot cuter. I will put a picture of what it is actually supposed to look like on the screen. But this was a really nice exercise and just not caring um, what came out of it, you know, just kind of knitting for the sake of knitting. I used um, some extra yarn that I had from a sample knit for Explore Knits and Fibers. So this colorway is not released yet. I'm not going to share the name of it, um, but it is on their boucle base and clearly it's a very, very bright red. Um, Allie, designer for sample knits, has told me, or for Explore Knits, has told me that I can sneak peek the color, so I'm not giving anything away. Um, but yeah, I used this really bright red um, and then did the ribbing all over in white. And this is Santa's Garden Sisu in the color white um, to make a little Santa hat for my cats. And of course they hate it, picture. Um, but I really enjoyed this <laughs> and it was fun and I think it's cute on them. And I've honestly been using it as an ornament on our tree um, since they don't want to wear it, so. It's cute and sweet and it was just like a nice relaxing knit after doing all of the knitting for other people and having to really put my best in. Um, so it's a nice exercise and not caring, letting the knitting be what it is. Um, so yeah. All right, the next thing I also have, um, these are from the Midwinter Sock Set by um, Summer Lee Designs. So I used Malabrigo yarn sock base. So it's just a superwash. It doesn't have any nylon in the colorway Jasmine. And then this was from a, the white was from a Yarn Addict Mystery mini skein set of five. And it's just a nice kind of creamy white that I think goes really well. And so the motif here is these nice kind of wintry, flowers as, as well as the kind of zigzag border and some little checks and then you do fleece stitch throughout the foot um, and then the pattern calls for um, an afterthought heel but I decided I would rather do a short row heel so I did my little short row heel and I also for the first time did um, 
the cast on in a different color and I really like how these turned out. So they were my Christmas socks. Um, so I wore them, well, I wore them a few times before Christmas, but I wore them on Christmas day, which was wonderful um, and Christmas Eve. And they were really great to wear. I will say I've worn them like probably three times by now and I just re-blocked them, hence why they look so nice. Um, but some of the color you can see is already fading on the foot um like the bottom of the foot and i think that's just because these are not reinforced with nylon so they are going to wear quicker than um traditional sock yarn socks so you know that's okay because they still are beautiful and i also this is the first time this has happened to me where typically when i make color work socks they are a little bit tight and so i was really intentional this time about really having good tension with the color work sections and to make sure that there was enough um just enough slack in the floats I guess um as well as picking up my floats well and I also typically size down um needle sizes so I was using a US zero for um the heel and the toe and the cuff and then normally I would actually size down to a US one for the color work. Um, but given that I keep having color work socks that are really tight, I decided to stick with the recommended pattern or recommended needle of a 1.5 for the color work. And so now they are a little bit loose, which is nice. Um, I guess I'd rather have too loose than too tight, but it does mean that these will be worn more like slippers in my house than really leaving the house too much. So that's okay. I work from home. Um, I can always use some nice comfy house slippers, but yeah, they're really pretty. I'm really happy with this. And I was inspired to make these by Salty Blonde Fine Fibers. Um, again, one of my favorite local dyers and one of her most recent collection. She just had two colorways for Christmas. They were the peppermint hot cocoa and a, I think it was toasted marshmallows colorway. And she had the peppermint hot cocoa, which is like a really nice brown with specks of red um, as the main color. And then the contrast color was the marshmallow colorway, which, um, you know, has some nice specks of um, gold and almost black um, on a white base and it looked really beautiful for her. And so I kind of wanted to use the same pattern for um, for myself with just stash yarn. And so I'm glad I went with the green and the white. It's like subtly Christmas and the pattern is not too um, outwardly Christmassy. So I feel comfortable wearing these in January or just throughout the year, but they also have the festive element I was looking for. So that was great. And then my last finish object um, is what I'm wearing. And so this, I should move a little bit. Oh my gosh. This is the um, blouse number one light by My Favorite Things Knitwear. Let me I try to sit up so you can see more. Um, it is a really, really nice pattern. It's nicely fitted. Um, I love the shoulder shaping detail here. Um, so it's it's a completely seamless design, which is awesome. You immediately cast on in the round and then knit down and there's like different increase rates between the shoulder and the body. And so you get a really interesting, nicely fitting um, garment. And then the sleeves, you kind of decrease and then increase to get a nice little bell sleeve. And yeah, it's beautiful. Um, obviously I made the light version and so this was knit with two strands of Surrey. The colorway and brand is by Poppy Spruce and Vibers, another local to me dyer who I really like and I've sampled it for before. And the colorway is Fuzzy Blanket. So it's from her Homebody collection. And it is lovely. I really love the way this garment fits and it is going to be kind of my New Year's, New Year's Eve outfit. Um, I thought that this was going to take a lot longer, so I cast it on on the 18th, and I actually cast it off on Christmas Eve, um, the morning of Christmas Eve. So it took me a week, um, if that, probably closer to six days to knit this entire thing. So super quick knit. I did crop it a little bit and made the sleeves a little bit shorter. Just I kind of prefer if thing if sleeves don't 
If a sleeve is fitted to my arm, I like it to be longer, but if it does flare out like this, I don't want it super long because I feel like it impairs, um, you know, cooking or washing dishes, things like that with it, because it doesn't want to like pull up quite as nicely as well. So I went with kind of still wrist length, so it's not that much shorter, but it was supposed to be um, a little bit longer in the pattern. And yeah, I'm... I'm really happy with this garment. I had bought the yarn, well, I bought half of the yarn I needed in September, thinking that I could get a whole, a whole blouse out of 100 grams of Surrey. Um, and then when I actually went to swatch, I realized like I definitely can't get it out of 100 grams if I want to hold double. And holding single does not look good. I'm not meeting gauge, so I ended up buying another two skeins and I made sure to hold the a skein from the new dye lot with a skein from the old dye lot so that um you know it's nicely it's very nicely blended together and yeah I'm really happy with this garment and again I get more knitting time than I thought this year because I thought this was going to be my last project of 2023 or my last whip of 2023 um but no I finished it you know within within a week and so I still have another week of 2023 knitting so that leads me into whips let me grab all my whips okay I don't know why I said all my whips there's only two um for me that that that's a lot of a lot of whips. I'm a pretty monogamous knitter, but both are accessories. So um, the first one I'm opening up is this iris hat. <laughs> um, you can't really see too much right now, but this is going to be a nice beanie for me. Um, I made the same pattern a few months ago for my mom for Christmas. Um, I also gifted that to her a few days ago and she really liked it. I'll put a picture of it. Um, and so I'm making myself one and I am knitting it in, well, I had to frog a lot of it. So I have <laughs> this ugly little ball, but I'm knitting it in, um, this strand of non-superwash fingering from the Yarn Addict who is now Little Fiber Co. Um, this is in the colorway Petal Perch, and then I'm knitting it also in one strand of Drops Brushed Alpaca Silk in the colorway 20, which I think is powder pink. So yeah, I'm really liking the fabric that I'm getting. It's a very nice soft pink, and I think this is going to be a really warm hat. It's a nice dense fabric, but it's got some good stretch, um, and I just, I love the shaping of the iris hat. I think it's beautiful to have this kind of um, floral or pinwheel design at the top um, that is made while you were doing your increases. And then I did have to frog a fair bit of the hat last night because I realized it was coming out way too big. So I had to frog back to basically 12 stitches less. So I had to frog back two increase rounds, um, plus, you know, all the work I've done since. Um, so now I'm feeling a lot more confident about the fit of this hat because I do, I do kind of prefer my hats to really hug my head. Um, and I've, I've got a pretty small head, so, um, I'm feeling a lot better about that. And now I just have to knit down. Um, and then, yeah, I specifically chose to work up this, um, petal perch colorway um, with a strand of the alpaca silk because I'm hoping that I can get both the hat and a little pair of mitts out of this um, yarn. So, you know, by working it with another strand, I have double the yardage. So that is awesome. And hopefully I can also make um, that, that pair of mitts. So we shall see and we shall see if I finish both of them in... 2023. Um, as I mentioned, I'm, or I don't think I mentioned this yet. I'm heading to California. Oh, I did. I'm heading to California to see my aunt and uncle and my mom's actually there now, um, in a few days. And so I will get a lot of knitting time while I'm traveling. And then also, um, you know, once I'm there, we will be hanging out quite a bit. So I'm feeling confident that I can get the hat and mitts done. 
Although it doesn't really matter if they are finished in early January, but you know, it's nice to just enter a new year with less on your needles. Um, so yeah, that is that hat. And then my other whip, I am trying to open the bag as silently as possible, is bunch of little socks and so I decided a few months ago and I'm finally doing it that I would really like to just make all of the socks that I did throughout the year in mini version um so I'm not sure if I will end up with a little garland of these or have them all individually strung and hang them up around um my kind of yarn storage area or what but <laughs> I'm really enjoying making them so I made this one it took me like an hour or two, probably like two hours. Um, and it's a free pattern by Summerly Designs. Um, it is called the Tiny Tree Socks, so they're definitely made to be ornaments, but I think a little garland would be cute. And it's really fun for me to recreate all the socks I've been working on throughout the year, especially because I gifted a lot of them, so I don't have all the socks that I made this year. And so it's been kind of fun to revisit all the yarns and work up little tiny versions of each. So yeah, I've really only done the first one yet. So this is a recreation of the first sock I ever did actually, which is really cute. And um, I have 11 more socks to recreate, but again, they only take about two hours each. So maybe I'll get two more done today, at least one. Um, and yeah, I'm having a great time with it. So. Those are my two two whips, um, which again, that's a lot for me, especially like the, I feel like the hat is two whips, even though it's only one, but because I'm doing the hat and mitts, I'm like, okay, well, there's two things going on there. I've got two patterns and like two sets of needles and everything I'll need for both pairs. So even though I've not started the mitts yet, it feels like it's already a whip. And then the socks, you know, it's, one big whip to make the socks but it's 12 tiny whips so i've got a lot going on for me um but yeah it's so cute <laughs> i'm really loving this process it's also just fun to it it kind of reminds me of um making the cat balaclava where it's just it's just fun it's just easy and fun and i don't have to worry about gauge i don't have to worry about weaving in ends or like mistakes that are gonna mess up the integrity of the sock because it is this big <laughs> and no one's ever gonna wear this it's fine it, if there's like i can hide a lot of mistakes in these things so it's great and it's been very fun to do and it's gonna be so cute i just love mini things so it's gonna be so cute to like have my big sock and then have my mini sock oh i should have brought my oh well next time when it's all done i'll show you all the socks together but yeah um, all right, that brings us to the acquisition section. And so like I mentioned, this is a slightly heavier acquisition se section than normal, um, but I actually did not buy a single one of these. Um, you know, Christmas was yesterday, and so I have lovely people in my life that gifted me knitting related things, as well as I have my sock swap yarn that I will show. Um, so yeah, let's, let's get into it. Um, with that warning, if you don't want to watch acquisitions, that's fine. But yeah, okay. So the first thing that I will talk about is the um, yarn and little notions gifted to me by Adina. Her Instagram is Adina's Makes. I don't know. It's public Instagram. She's so kind. Um, so we were paired up by La Mercerie for the Winter Wishes Sock Swap, which is something that they do every year um, where you basically buy a spot in it um, in kind of early to mid-November. I think, yeah, it was early November where you buy your spot in the Sock Swap and then um, they pair you up with someone else who also bought in and you match with them to send a little box of goodies um, to each other during the month of December. And so it's meant to be enough yarn to make a pair of socks. And then you can also include little goodies that are related to knitting or related to kind of winter festivities. And so um, I was paired with Adina who lives out on the East Coast and 
she was so lovely it was really great getting to know her we ended up being really similar which was awesome and i think that we will be staying in touch in the future which is awesome um but yeah so she gifted me two skeins which was so generous um they're both 100 grams and this one is from a local dyer to her area so wild violet fibers and it's in this nice kind of tonal blue i told her i was more into tonals right now just given that um for a lot of the socks i want to make i want to make more intricate designs and it's easier to make intricate designs with tonals um that you know still have some color texture but then aren't um overpowering the design you're trying to create so she gave to me this nice blue one which i might save till next christmas and do like a um, kind of a night winter sky with snowflakes with i think that would be beautiful but we'll see what inspiration strikes me and it is a one-of-a-kind skein called night sky it's so pretty um the other one she gave to me is this one and this is by Ara aracania um yarns and it's their huasco sock kettle dye um and also beautiful i really really like this one um i love like again another tonal but i really love the light colors here and the deep deep kind of purple um i think the color is byzantium or byzant knitting podcasts humble me so much on my ability to pronounce words um byzantium byzantium um it's a really nice color um and yeah it's gonna be stunning i think that i um will be working up a pair of socks in this pretty soon um which you will hear more about in a few minutes with another acquisition she also gifted me some i'm trying to figure out we'll show them one at a time some stitch markers that she made um so this is a little sock it's so cute there we go a little sock um and i think she made like two or three of each kind a little snowman with a scarf on and a little hat so cute um and so she made these all with shrinky dinks which is kind of that shrinkable plastic so she drew out all the shapes cut them out and shrunk them up um and they're so cute i've used them as progress keepers on a couple things or just to mark my increases um and yeah i really enjoy them and it was it was so fun to participate in that i'll i'll put a picture of my box i took a picture of the box i sent her um she really wanted some neon yarn so i got um, a nice sock set from salty blonde fibers so yeah that was that was very fun to participate in and i'm really grateful I got to do that and meet another lovely person in the knitting world. So that is that. The um, next yarn or acquisition I will talk about is yarn gifted by my really great friend Leah. So I've already mentioned I gave her Frog and Toad and she gave me, um, along with a really nice um, hand-painted little tea storage thing, it looks like a tea house, um it's kind of like a cookie jar but for tea it's really cute um she also gifted me two sock sets so these were from the la mercerie winter sock set collection so they specifically came up with or collaborated with a few different dyers to um make some sets of yarn for socks obviously um for the winter season and they came out when I was on a trip with my friend Leah so we went um, to a town called Ure um, in the southwest of Colorado it's really beautiful and we were together when it came out and I just I kept talking about how pretty they all were and showing her to the showing them to her um, and saying like oh I really shouldn't buy more yarn but these are so stunning and so she took note of that and bought me two of them um so these were my two favorites and this is by the yarn addict again now little little fiber co um and it's called the show bunny sock set so it's this really nice um purple and orange and kind of white and some pink in there too um main skein and then a nice purple um accent skein or contrasting skein and so pretty i already have plans for this and i'm really excited for it but yeah i'm so grateful for 
for both these um but I, I really love this one this was my like favorite favorite and then this is the other one this is by treehouse knits who is a new to me designer i'm really excited to work with the yarn and it is really really soft um it's just a 75 25 merino or superwash merino blend but the colorway is keepsake and um it's so sweet so it you know has this nice oh it's so pretty like the top of the skein is more of that green and blue and then as you go down you see a lot more of this kind of red like burnt orange kind of color and i love it um it's got some really nice depth and then you get two um contrast colors in this nice blue and then the nice kind of red or orange color um and i'm really excited for this too i think that since there are two little contrast skeins um I can definitely get two pairs of socks out of this, so I think that I'm gonna knit one pair for myself and then one friend, one pair for my friend Leah, so that you know we both have some. And I specifically had highlighted this one not only because I really liked it, but I thought that she'd really like the colors. So I was like, look at this yarn! Isn't yarn fun? Look, it's colors you like too. And so now I'm like, of course I'm gonna make her a pair with it as well. So this was so sweet, and my my friends and family know me so well. Clearly. Um, the next acquisition is some yarn from my mom and this is the last bit of yarn um, and then we have some more kind of fun accessories and notions but here is all of it together and so this is from Bad Sheep Yarn and I saw this on Instagram a few weeks ago and it is from a Nutcracker collection. So if you've been watching me for, before, I talk, I have talked a lot in the last few months about the Nutcracker Ballet. It is a family tradition that my mom, my grandma, and I go see it every single year. And I, I'm i 23, I've probably seen the Nutcracker 21 times, started it very young. So I've seen it a ton of times. And it is one of my favorite traditions in the world that we do. And so this is inspired by the Nutcracker. <laughs> and so I sent it to my mom and I was like, look at this yarn, it's Nutcracker yarn. Um, and she pulled through and she got me the Nutcracker yarn. And so these two skeins are the same colorway. They are Clara. And so it is inspired by, she's kind of the main character of the Nutcracker, but <laughs> the Nutcracker has a very loose plot. Um, but she's kind of the, the little girl, I don't know how little she is, the, the young girl that, um, you know, the story kind of follows as she goes into the Kingdom of Sweets and meets all the other characters and watches them thank her for helping defeat the Rat King. Um, convol slightly convoluted plot. Um, but yeah, stunning. So this skein, can you see the sparkles? So it is a sock yarn, um, so it is 75% merino, 20% nylon, and then it has 5% Stellina in it. So it's got the nice little sparkles. And I will probably save this until October or November to make myself some nice Christmassy or some just some nice socks that I can wear to the ballet next year. So excited about it. Um, my mom also gifted me a skein of it in DK. So their DK is really interesting because it still has nylon. So it's a 75-25 with nylon and superwash merino. Um, and I'll, I'll show the colors a little bit better here. The speckling of like this kind of deeper red, it reminds me of raspberry jam. And then the nice light pink is just stunning. It's so pretty. Um, and my mom, upon gifting this to me said, I think you need to make a Sophie scarf with it. So, um, we'll see if I, <laughs> if I end up doing that, I think it would be really cute to have a little Sophie scarf. Um, I... I'm quite a pink girly, so it would be probably the best color for a Sophie scarf for me because so many things match with it um, that I already have. And oh, it's so pretty, it's so cute. And then the last one she gifted me, this is called the Sugar Plum Fairies. Um, and so it's inspired by the Sugar Plum Fairy and you know all the other Sugar Plum Fairies in the story. And it's really pretty. Um, this is almost more of my mom's colors than mine. I still love it, but given that it's more of my mom's colors, I'm thinking that if I find um, maybe a contrast color to go with it and shorten the leg like I do 
on the majority of my socks. I could probably get two pairs of socks out of this, one for me sometime in the future, but then be able to make my mom a pair of Nutcracker socks as well. So um, that's really exciting. We'll see, you know, when in the year I want to do that. Um, probably a little bit closer to Christmas season next year because I already knit a whole sweater for the Nutcracker this year and a pair of socks for Christmas and a sweater for New Year's. So I'm kind of over knitting for the holiday season this year, but this is gonna be stunning next year and can't wait to knit them up. And it was so sweet of her, so. So nice. <laughs> um, oh yeah, after receiving, let's see, that is, for seven skeins of yarn um, this Christmas. And I'm actually, when I'm with my aunt and uncle, we are going to a yarn store in Berkeley, which I'm very excited to look at. It is called the Black Squirrel, so I'll probably end up with like one more skein for the rest of the year. I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed about how much yarn I have. So I am focusing a little bit more going forward on knitting my stash down and resisting purchasing more yarn. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. The next few acquisitions are knitting related, but not yarn. So the first is the 52 weeks of socks book. So my mom gifted me this and I'm so excited um, to work through this. And as I mentioned, there was, um, I already have a plan for this yarn and it is one of the patterns in this book. And so the pattern is called the Dear Bjorn socks. Here is what the socks look like and it'll be my first toe up socks. Um, and I think it's gonna be really beautiful in that color. So I'm very, very excited. I don't know, you can tell it's got like a nice slip stitch motif um, around the top of the foot and the leg and it's gonna be really awesome. So I will not be knitting a sock every week of the year, but I've picked out a few of the patterns that I really like in this book, as well as some of the patterns that, sock patterns that I already own because I went through a phase of just buying patterns whenever designers had sales. So now I've collected a pretty good collection of sock patterns that I really want to knit up a pair of socks every month um, with stash yarn. So that'll be probably my February pair of socks. Um, so very excited about that. And yeah, I'm so excited about this whole book. It's really beautiful. Um, all the photos and seeing all the designers that put work into it is awesome. The, my mom with the sock, 52 weeks of socks book, also gifted me a new set of sock walkers. Um, I have a set, but it is wood and I really don't like the wood. I'm always scared about catching the yarn on the, on the wood while I'm putting the socks on. It's not the smoothest, it's kind of like a laser cut thin wood. And so it's not the smoothest and I worry about splinters like or little pieces of wood getting in the socks and then when I wear them getting a splinter or just catching the yarn and ripping it or something. Um, so I'm really glad that my mom gifted me a pair of metal sock blockers that also I think will, you know, increase the airflow and hopefully let the socks dry a little bit quicker because they are obviously hollow in the middle. Um, so there's three different sizes. Um, I'd say this is kind of a child size. Um, this is the, oh my gosh, mid size, and then the largest size. And they also nicely have a little hanger so I can just hang these up um, to dry when I am blocking stuff on them, which is awesome. So very grateful for that. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be the most exciting. And I intentionally hid this when I was showing off my whips, um, but my mom made this tote bag for me. And so currently I am using it as a project bag, but it is just a normal tote bag. Um, so it's got little mice eating strawberries all over it. It's so cute. Um, and she so sweetly put snaps on the top of it to help me keep my cat out of my projects and also put um, a little bit, a little tie right in the front so I can tie a cute little bow and it looks so cute. Um, she also, to go with it, um, made two, two other little bags with the same fabric with the little 
guys. So cute. And then they're lined in this nice green. And so that goes really well together. And it's just so cute. I am so happy to have something made by my mom. Um, and this bag is just so stinking cute. Um, so that is definitely probably I should have started with that. I'm trying to go chronological, but it's definitely like the most important acquisition because it's like it's a little family family heirloom. I was also gifted an heirloom this year. Um, she also gifted me this set. There's here's another one. Um, a set of these. Um, they're supposed to be kind of like packing cubes for luggage. Um, but I, of course, am storing yarn in them or using them as a project bag because that is my entire life. And so there's a set of three. There's one more in here that I'm using to store um, my notions. Um, and they're so cute as well. Um, and yeah, I was gifted a lot of project bags this year, which is awesome. I can always use more bags. Um, I'm just trying to make sure I'm going through everything. Uh, my mom also gifted me some little um some of these little clips that you can put on a set of needles which is really nice so if you have interchangeables or circulars or just a bunch of dpns you can put them through like here and then this closes and keeps them in um so you know while you're working on something you can use them to keep the product on your needles or i often store my needles with these on um, just to make my life a little bit easier. So she gifted me some of those. Um, I'd also gifted her half of a set of um, needle stoppers. So I've got these little, um, they're just little rubber guys with a hole. Um, these ones actually have holes on both sides that go all the way through, um, but cute little flowers and cute little leaves. So I'd bought um, a set of these to go in my mom's stocking and then I had some leftover from that set that I gifted myself. Um, I also did the same with oh my gosh, these which also you put needles in on each side and then you can store your needles together or use them in the middle of your project to keep your stitches on your needles. So I had kept a few of the ones um, that I gifted her. So some nice little notions. Um, final two acquisitions. First is this little stamp that my dad and his girlfriend gifted me. And this is what it stamps. So it says Sarah's Ma Hand Makes. That's the channel you are currently watching. Um, so, and it's in this nice pink color. So this was so sweet. My, my dad's girlfriend definitely did the majority of the picking out on this one. Um, but I'm it was just like so thoughtful that now I have a little stamp with um, my Instagram slash channel name and I can put it on little tags when I gift it to people um, or if I'm sending, you know, sample knits back and write a little note, I can use my stamp. And so really thoughtful and made me feel like like a real, <laughs> a real person with like a real thing going on for me as far as Sarah's handmakes go. So. That was super special. It looks like this and there's a little well to add more ink in as I go, but yeah, so nice. Um, and then the final thing was gifted to me by my grandma and it is a year of knitting stitches. Um, so it's a stitch a day perpetual calendar. And let me just show you um, essentially every day of the year and it doesn't have any um, weeks or yeah, days of the week. And so I can use it over and over. It shows you a different stitch pattern and gives you instructions of how to make it. So I'm really excited to look at this every single day. I'm going to put it on my desk and to also just get some inspiration throughout the year um, for, you know, how to make some new motifs. Some of my goals this year revolve around um, designing myself and so I think that this calendar will actually be a really big asset for that because there's some really inspiring stitch patterns in here like here I'll show you I I don't know if you all do this but I always flip immediately to my birthday in a calendar or my birth month and so that's my birthday um, a nice little cable pattern I think that's really cool and so yeah there's a lot of inspiration in here and 
excited to look at it every day and hopefully find something from it to design with or just just to enjoy um so yeah that is that is it um this is gonna end up being a little bit of a long one um so those are all my acquisitions i should say that as i mentioned a few times i have yet to see my aunt and uncle i'm heading out there in a few days so we will celebrate christmas yet again so i probably will have like one or two more knitting related acquisitions um my aunt actually watches my channel this is being uploaded after i'm there so hi jennifer um but yeah this will be uploaded there so there might be some more um acquisitions or gifts that i will share on my instagram stories if you're not following me there you can find it in the description below um but yeah this is what i currently have and i'm very grateful for um the love this holiday season. It was really, really rewarding to gift everyone the things I made to them. I think that um, there, there, you know, there were no big flops with what I made, and I really feel feel very seen and known with the gifts I received. Um, so, yeah, I'm really grateful for all that. And then, just to wrap up quickly, I know I normally give some sort of recommendation and. I guess I could quickly say I've been obsessed with salt lamps lately, like Himalayan salt lamps. Um, my my old work actually gifted me one um, on my last day, and it is it's so comforting. Um, I highly recommend getting a Himalayan salt lamp if you do not already have one. The glow they emit is just so wonderful, and I'm already thinking it's kind of like a sizable one that I have in my living room, and I already kind of want to get one for my desk, like a little mini one. Um, just cause it's such a comforting, cozy glow. Um, so that is my recommendation. And then I also will quickly give a tiny life update, which is that, um, I just changed jobs. So I, um, I, I don't want to share too much, but I am in a new position at a new organization and I'm working fully remotely and, um, the job I've changed to is more in line with my career goals and is at a company that is also more in line with my values around, um, especially around respect. And um, I'm just really happy I'm working fully remotely. So that has been really wonderful. Last week was my first week. And then of course there's Christmas. So I get kind of a week to digest everything that happened in my first week and get ready to hit the ground running in January. Um, but yeah, I'm feeling really grateful for that and for just moving on to new things. Um, so yeah, it, it's been, it's been really wonderful and I'm, I'm really happy about it. And it probably does mean I have a little bit less knitting time because I am onboarding for a new job and this new job does have some more responsibilities. So you may see less finished objects from me in the future, but I think that it is for a good reason. Um, so yeah, that is super exciting. Um, also I wanted to quickly say what you can expect from me in the next few months as we go into the new year. This will be my last video of the year. And so, you know, I'll see you guys in 2024. Um, I wanted to say thank you so much for watching this year. We are actually getting really close to a thousand subscribers, which is crazy. Um, that feels very weird. Um, it's, it's really exciting. Um, I mean, it, the numbers don't really matter. I try not to look at the numbers, but it is really exciting that, um, you know, nearly a thousand people are connecting with what I am talking about. So that's wonderful. Thank you for every time you've watched or if you've subscribed or left a comment or gone over to Instagram and messaged me. I really, really appreciate you. Thank you. Um, and so in 2024, um, I'm planning my first video back. Um, not back, I'm not really taking a break. Um, but my first video in 2024 will be a nice everything I made video. And then I'm planning on doing some um, reflecting on my 2023 year knitting. Um, not on the here's what I made, but more on the like lessons I learned or fiber I used and then what my 2024 kind of knitting resolutions or goals are. Um, so those are at least the next two videos uh, you can expect from me and you know I'm really trying to um, put some good attention towards um, 
this kind of community I'm building up as well. So I'm hoping to be a little bit more active on Instagram and on YouTube um, going into 2024. So, okay, <laughs> we are hitting an hour mark. So I will wrap it up here and just say thank you for watching. It's been a really great year of knitting for me. It's been really great to meet so many new people online and I hope that you had a great holiday season or if you do not celebrate Christmas, I hope that, you know, you're hanging in there with the cold or, you know, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, really enjoying the warm weather, I'm jealous. Um, but wherever you are in life, whatever's going on, I hope that you are enjoying it and uh, happy new year. I will see you soon. Bye.